everyone, this is Sidekick Jason doing another behind the scenes feature. Today we are looking at one of the most iconic sets of classic Thomas and Friends. So, when I decided to do season three and I was gonna go back to doing standard gauge sets again, I pretty much you know, knew from the get go that I would recreate the windmill scene and all the other um, sets that take place in the opening sequence. But yeah, here it is finally. It's set up pretty much only to be filmed from the one angle. There isn't really much to do. This is like, uh, it's different. Like I've never done something like this before where it's actually just like, you know, the water laid out and you just throw moss and make it look like wetlands. Um, yeah, kind of. Kind of different. There isn't too many, you know, wetlands on Sodor, so I haven't like had to film a ton. So, but yeah, I really liked it. I think it turned out great. Um, I hope to do more of these, like in the future. Like it's cool that I have the potential now, especially since I um, I made these cattails um, that I can just kind of move around and place wherever. And so I stuck them all around the set. And if you notice. Um, so it's set up to basically be looked at from this angle and this angle only, pretty much. So if I come up, it kind of breaks the illusion. And you can see that everything was um, kind of forms a V, the way it comes together and stuff. And you'll notice that while it looks like it's full in the shot, the cattails are only in the first half, and then the last half is kind of thinner on things, because I found out that if I put as much stuff in the front as I did in the back, it makes the back look like it's really full just because of the perspective of things. So yeah, it turned out really well. I'm really happy with all the shots that I got, and I think it's gonna be a wonderful, um, wonderful addition to season three. I always wanted to do like a story about, I don't know, something that actually happens with the windmill to give Thomas, um, I don't know, make it more than just a location that's just seen, but actually has something that happens to it. But, well, like, it's just looking, especially with the, the way the set is set up, it would just be too difficult to try and do that. Like, the only way I could do that is if I moved the windmill itself closer to the tracks, but that ruins the, um, like, the sizing and the scale of different things compared to the original shots and so like I mean from Thomas's perspective like the windmill's like way out over there so I don't know but I haven't actually well I've got one really solid story idea about the water mill that I'm going to try and do it's not in season three or season four or anything like that but I definitely want to try and um, film well, use it in the future because it's a pretty good story and it kind of ties the water mill into being an more of an iconic part of Thomas's branch line. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this behind the scenes feature, kind of something different and fun. So, um, if anyone wants to know about these water things, um, how I do my water, uh, I'm not quite sure what it's called, um, but it's like. Eh, not wax paper, I don't think. Maybe it is. Um, I got it at a craft store, and it's like, um, it, it, it's next to like wrapping paper and stuff, but it's just kind of this clear um, blue. They have different colors and stuff, but I just got blue. And it works great, because it, you know, it gives it the reflection that I need. I can layer it on stuff and put it over things to kind of, you know, change the blueness of it. Like you can tell in the middle there where it overlaps, it's definitely more blue than having the green grass show underneath. So like if I wanted to make this more blue, I could have done that. But, you know, this is, it's reflecting the, um, the color of the sky. And so I thought it was just, you know, it was good enough to leave as it is. So, but yeah, I hope you guys, Enjoy this, and I will talk to you guys later.